Odi, too. The remonstrance of Shakespeare mark a concise if, yet regardful of your native land, old Shakespeare's tongue you deem to understand, lo, from the blissful bowers where heaven rewards instructive sages and unblemished bards, I come, the ancient founder of the stage, intent to learn, in this discerning age, what form of which your fancies have embracked, and whither tends your elegance of taste, that thus at length our homely toils you spurn, that thus to foreign scenes you proudly turn, that from my brow the laurel wreath you claim to crown the rivals of your country's fame. What, though the footsteps of my devious muse the measured walks of Grecian art refuse? Or though the frankness of my hearty style mock the nice touches of the critic's file? Yet, what my age and climate held to view, impartial I surveyed and fearless drew. And say, ye skillful in the human heart, who know to prize a poet's noblest part, what age, what clime, could e'er an ampler field for lofty thought, for daring fancy, yield? I saw this England break the shameful bands forged for the souls of men by sacred hands, I saw each groaning realm her aid implore. Her sons the heroes of each warlike shore. Her naval standard the dire Spaniard's bane obeyed through all the circuit of the main. Then too great commerce, for a late found world, around your coast her eager sails unfurled, new hopes, new passions, thence the bosom furred. New plans, new arts, the genius thence inspired. Thence every scene, which private fortune knows, in stronger life, with bolder spirit, rose. Disgracked I this full prospect which I drew? My colors languid, or my strokes untrue? Have not your sages, warriors, swains, and kings, confessed the living draught of men and things? What other bard in any clime appears alike the master of your smiles and tears? Yet have I deemed your audience to entice with wretched bribes to luxury and vice? Or have my various scenes a purpose known which freedom, virtue, glory, might not own? Such from the first was my dramatic plan. It should be yours to crown what I began, and now that England spurns her Gothic chain, and equal laws and social science reign, I thought, now surely shall my zealous eyes view nobler bards and juster critics rise, intent with learned labor to refine the copious ore of Albion's native mine, our stately muse more graceful airs to teach, and form her tongue to more attractive speech, till rival nations listen at her feet, and own her polished as they owned her great. But do you thus my favorite hopes fulfill? Is France at last the standard of your skill? Alas for you! that so betray a mind of art unconscious and to beauty blind. Say, does her language or ambition raise, her barren, trivial, unharmonious phrase, which fetters eloquence to scantiest bounds, and maims the cadence of poetic sounds? Say, does your humble admiration choose the gentle prattle of her comic muse, while wits, plain dealers, fops, and fools appear, charged to say not but what the king may hear? or rather melt your sympathizing hearts won by her tragic scenes romantic arts, where old and young declaim on soft desire, and heroes never, but for love, expire? No. Though the charms of novelty, a while, perhaps too fondly win your thoughtless smile, yet not for you designed indulgent fate the modes or manners of the bourbon state. An ill your minds my partial judgment reads, and many an augury my hope misleads. If the fair maids of yonder blooming train to their light courtship would an audience deem, or those chaste matrons a Parisian wife choose for the model of domestic life, or if one youth of all that generous band, the strength and splendor of their native land, would yield his portion of his country's fame, and quit old freedom's patrimonial claim, with lying smiles oppression's poem to see, and judge of glory by a king's decree. O oh, blessed at home with justly envied laws, O oh, long the chiefs of Europe's general cause, whom heaven hath chosen at each dangerous hour to check the inroads of barbaric power, the rights of trampled nations to reclaim, and guard the social world from bonds and shame. O oh, let not luxury's fantastic charms thus give the lie to your heroic arms, nor for the ornaments of life embrace dishonest lessons from that vaunting race, whom fate stred laws for, in eternal fate despotic rule was heir to freedom's hate, whom in each war like, each commercial part, in civil council, and in pleasing art, the judge of earth predestined for your foes, and made it fame and virtue to oppose.